try to live my life in our cultural way of, of thinking Hawaiian. You know, and, and it's and it's funny because being brought up in Western society, you know, even in a Hawaiian culture, and we taught, you know, like the difference between ownership and stewardship. You know, um, in the Hawaiian culture, everything was more about stewardship. It's like I take care of the land, I take care of the ocean because the ocean is going to take care of me. The land is going to take care of me, and we all take care of one another. You know, the whole Ahapua system, uh, which is all about sustainability and you know, growing your food everything from the mountain to the ocean, it's a smart way of life because everything is divided into your mountain range and then into your community. And then you have your konahikis, which is like your, your leaders, your chiefs, that um, leading that community or that ahapua area. So, you know, the fishermen, the hunters, the farmers, everybody all coexists. It's all about managing your watershed. You know, water is life. And that's why, you know, when we talk about water in Hawaiian is vai. So when you say vai vai, vai vai means a lot of water, or it can be interpreted in what we say kauna, which is the hidden meaning of richness. You know, so if you had vai vai, you'd be rich. So rich for us wasn't monetary. Rich for us was about life, was about water, was about, you know, sustainability, food, you know, the process of life, you know, creation. The Hawaiian value was all about, can I take care of you? Can I take care of grandma? Can I take care of grandpa? Can I take care of the ocean? The land was all about caretaking. You know, again, thinking Hawaiian about stewardship, you know, where everything is in balance, in perfect balance. You know, we bought property up in Wailua and we have one farm. And on that farm with all of us together in our group, it's all about stewardship, not ownership. We bought the farm, we don't own the land. We are stewards of the land. Every value that you have interprets your behavior. My name is Wes Carter, and I'm the president and third generation leader of Atlantic Packaging, a company founded by my grandfather in 1946. I'm also a husband and the father of eight-year-old twins and a lifelong surfer, traveler, and outdoorsman. And I've seen firsthand the devastation caused by plastic pollution in our oceans, lakes, and rivers. Today, Atlantic is the largest privately held packaging company in North America, and we support companies in almost every manufacturing vertical which gives us the unique ability to use our influence to help the supply chain transition away from problematic packaging that threatens our global waters. A New Earth Project is a coalition of outdoor enthusiasts, industry-leading brands, and innovative packaging suppliers all working together to solve these problems. Because it's about all of us, it has to be. Please join us on our journey to a new earth. Atlantic Packaging was founded in 1946 by my grandfather, W. Horace Carter. Uh, we actually started as a small weekly newspaper, and um, my grandfather won a Pulitzer Prize for meritorious public service in 1952 for fighting the Ku Klux Klan with his newspaper. Uh, because of his work, uh, over 300 Klansmen were arrested. You know, um, the, the sort of legend of my grandfather uh, was just a part of uh, our family for really as long as I can remember. Now, I will say when I was young, um, I didn't really associate my grandfather with his, you know, campaign against the Klan and the Pulitzer. And you know, I, I guess I knew that story from a pretty young age, but when I was growing up, my grandfather um, was in his, you know early to late 60s, early 70s, and living in Central Florida. As an outdoor writer, I mean, that's who I remember, you know, so when I would go visit my grandfather, it was always, my parents would put me on an Amtrak train, actually, um, 
and I would take the Amtrak to, you know, Gainesville, Florida. And um, he lived uh, right outside of Gainesville in a little area called Cross Creek. And uh, he lived right on Orange Lake. And he was a big freshwater fisherman. That was what we did from dark to dark. You know, like I, you know, it was uh, as a young kid, um, I used to love going down there to visit him, but he, he was serious about fishing. It did not matter that I was, you know, eight years old. We went, we left at dark and we got home at dark. <laughs> um, that was the way he fished. And, um, you know, he, and during those days too, he was he was he was a big outdoor writer. You know, he was one of the most well known uh, outdoor, specifically freshwater fishing writers in in the state of Florida. Um, and he wrote a lot of books. Uh, he did a lot of that. So that was really the the Horace Carter that I knew growing up. When my grandfather won the Pulitzer, he was only thirty two years old. He was a guy with very little resources. Um, he did not have a huge platform. I mean, he had started this little weekly newspaper that had a circulation of about 800 people. Within about the first year of him publishing that newspaper, became aware that the Ku Klux Klan was really active in that community and the surrounding communities, doing motorcades and dragging people out of their homes and cross burnings and really all the things you read about in the history books. He didn't have deep pockets. Um, he didn't have political connections. Uh, my grandfather had had this liberal arts, you know, education, and he was a God and country, power of the pen kind of guy. And he took it upon himself to use his newspaper to fight the Klan. In that era of our history, in the Deep South, this was ground zero, you know? This was ground zero. He was right in the thick of it. All he really had was his own moral compass and a sense of what's right and wrong and a deep sense of um, courage, um, he, he used the, 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 the voice that he had and, and the platform that he built to, to do something truly honorable and truly meaningful. Because of his writing and the work that he did, uh, the FBI, uh, with his help, infiltrated the Klan uh, and arrested over 300 Klansmen, including the Grand Dragon of the Carolina Ku Klux Klan. Um, and that broke their back. They were never the same organization in the Southeast. And my grandfather won the Pulitzer Prize for meritorious public service in 1951. And he was the first weekly newspaper to ever win a Pulitzer. So that's how Atlantic started. I said, you know, it may be very unpopular, but I have to do what I think is right and what my conscience tells me to do. Great things are accomplished by the people who refuse to lie down, who refuse to say no. But I have to do what I think is right and what my conscience tells me to do. Um, uh, what do I want to say here? There were, there were a series of moments. I, I can't say it all happened like a strike of lightning. There was a series of moments over, you know, several months, maybe a year, where I realized that this problem of plastic pollution um, was being created by the supply chain that I was a part of. A lot of people told my grandfather that he couldn't do what he tried to do too. You know, so like this theme of like, it's too dangerous, it's too risky, it's impossible, you'll never get it done, you'll never actually, you know, it'll kill your, the, the theme of, of, of playing small, you know, has, ha, has been the, it's been the thing that we have challenged, you know, with this organization, uh, my grandfather certainly challenged it. Kai Lenny certainly challenges it. Kelly Slater certainly challenges it. And maybe that is the glue. You know, I didn't think about it until just this moment, but maybe that is the glue that binds all of us together is we, we don't think small. You know, when we talk about the watershed and, and the unbalance, right, of, of, of nature, of things, and trying to 
find balance. But then we get into um, politics and logistics and financials. And, you know, again, it's the Western world that values all these things, whereas the Hawaiian value was all about, can I take care of you? Great things are accomplished by the people who refuse to lie down, who refuse to say no. And, you know, I had a great inspiration for that. You know, my grandfather and my father as well. I mean, what my father has done with this organization over the last 50 years is remarkable by any scale. If, uh, if my grandfather if my grandfather's spirit is, is the beating heart of Atlantic, um, then there's no question that the backbone, the hands, the strength, the mind of Atlantic has, has been my father, Rusty. I mean, where we sit today versus where it started when he was 28 years old and took over this company, where we were barely doing a million dollars in sales, and today to be the largest privately held packaging company, you know, Again, like I've said many times, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, and this project is no different. And I also realized the companies and the supply chain that created these problems, just like Atlantic Packaging, wasn't intentional. None, none of us as humans, none of us as organizations set out to pollute our oceans and rivers and lakes. That, that was never the plan. It was an unintended consequence. And was it naive? Were, were we myopic in the way we were operating? Sure. But, but I don't know that at this point that really matters. I, I don't know that looking back and pointing fingers and trying to assign blame really accomplishes a whole lot. For me, there was just a moment that you're a part of this supply chain and actually you're a pretty integral part of this supply chain. And if Atlantic can embrace sustainability, can embrace sustainable packaging, can not only advocate for it, but you can do more than advocate for it, Wes. You can actually help facilitate the change. Literally standing on the shoulders of guys like Kelly Slater and Kyle Lenny that are riding giants. The one thread that I think we all have in common is that, you know, Impossible is just not in our vocabulary, you know? And um, with, with, with pollution and climate change, it just can't be. It just can't be. Humans are the most innovative, uh, ingenious, you know, beings that we've ever encountered in the universe. I mean, we are really good when we're together. Look at what we've done. Just look at what we've done in the last hundred years. It's remarkable. So to think that this isn't a problem that we can solve, I don't accept that. You know, but what it will take is a lot of energy and a lot of work and a lot of collaboration, a ton of innovation. You know, th th that has to happen. And it requires talents from everybody. Like none of us can do this on our own. It is forcing us to do it together. And I actually think that's an incredible gift. And I think this is the exact same thing. It is an opportunity for our generation to come together, to refuse to lie down in the face of a tremendous adversity and say, we're gonna do this and we're gonna fail along the way. When we fail, we'll fail fast and we will get up and keep going until we fix this problem. And uh, I think we have all the tools to do it. And the primary tool is just human ingenuity and collaboration. It's the aloha, right? You know, that sharing of each other, the caring of each other, you know? And it's the bonding of, you know, like, I always say, you know, everyone who walks on our beach, everyone who steps into our water becomes part of our family. We're not divided by land, but we're connected by water.
Can I take care of grandma? Can I take care of grandpa? Can I take care of the ocean, the land? It was all about caretaking, you know? And that was the biggest value in that. But, you know, when you change and go, I don't want to get sued. I don't want to, you know, I want to make a lot of money. You know, it, it's a different value system. Every value that you have interprets your behavior. You know, and anytime we're in the ocean, it doesn't really matter where we are. We at home, you know, and that's why I said my family is, you know, we are the biggest nation in the whole world, the ocean nation, you know, because we all are family. We all share that same values, that same culture, you know. So we're related by this, you know, and that's the thing. So, you know, meet me at home. I'm in the water, you know. On the next episode of Journey to a New Earth. Nice to you. I travel everywhere. This is my baby right here. I never use a water bottle. Before. We met this girl, Melati, in Bali, and when she was 16, her and her friends wanted to clean up the river. We're not pointing fingers. We're not trying to beat anybody over the head. We're just saying, let's stop doing this. The packaging for most people is at the end of the choo-choo train, where, like, where's the value in this? Sure. Right? Why? It doesn't, it's not affecting my bottom line outside of cost. Right. So why would I really care? That like most of what you put in that recycling bin is not getting recycled.